What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Alright, so I know I look kinda rough. Please don't mind that I just coming from school. But today is filming day and I say we're going to film nonetheless. Still trying to work around um a proper time to film so I can kinda eliminate the noise outside but working around it and I'm still going to do my video nonetheless and make the most out of it, right? So I decided that for today's video I'm going to do kind of like not really a story time, right? So I want to speak about my experience with with bullying today. It's a video that after after I spoke about my my medical journey, I said that I would do this video, but I wanted to give myself, you know, I was I was I was contemplating basically is this something that I want to speak about on my platform or, or XYZ but after I did that video it gave me I guess I would say maybe the courage or or yeah it gave me the courage to feel that I could speak about topics that were more personal on my page because ultimately I don't want to be like you know all like sheltered in a box I want this space to be my space where I can feel free to speak about you know certain topics or certain things that I feel that maybe people can empathize with or they can learn something from it so they can relate and say oh you know say or yeah man a real pre or something like that so I want to share my experience and you know touch on some life stuff and yeah I was going to write down what I was going to talk about, like just to jot down my points. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk from my heart, and I'm, I'm just going to express myself the best way I know how. So, for those of you who are new here, my name is Romy Donaldson. I am a Jamaican. I'm a medical student in China. I'm a second year medical student, and this is my YouTube space. And we're gonna have a little chit chat. So, I. I'm a very expressive individual and from how I speak just by sitting there and watching me realize that I speak with my I speak with my hands a lot you know I enunciate my words and so forth might not have the deepest voice in comparison to other males and so forth you know it would be described as an effeminate personality right that is that and not bashing my country or anything love love Jamaica but growing up in Jamaica I was always, well, I did, I, when we did young, we never knew what bullying was, but I always felt out of place in a, in, from, from a young age because, you know, in schools, in schools, people would always, you know, bring up the point, oh, are you walk, so you talk, so you going like a girl and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You suppress those emotions or you suppress those feelings. Yeah, you suppress those emotions, those feelings, and you don't really confront those. You know, going through prep school, it was same, it was a similar situation, but that's more of a controlled environment, so it wasn't you know not too serious. When I when I put that in practice, or let it get too personal or anything. But when I went to high school, so for those of you who don't know, I attended an all boys high school in Jamaica, and I attended that school for seven years, so from grade seven all the way up to grade thirteen. So secondary and post secondary, I was at that school. When I went to high school, it come in like say <laughs> everything just you know, so being in a prep school setting, you know, as I said before it was more controlled. So when I went to high school now it's like everything just come down at me at once. I had braces and like if if you like ever see me in person or anything, I have a very straight posture. So I walk very upright and I try to speak very proper and blah 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 no them never take like into that and automatically in a jamaican terms me i did batiman and me i did this and me i did that and and blah 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 and it was a really rough experience for me and it was it was it was rough because i've never had to experience you know the taunting and the this and the that on that level before so i didn't really know like how to how to maneuver it and it reached the point where I mean, say people wanted to come to my class to fight me off, like I go in the bathroom. May I see everywhere, you know, around me a fish, around me a this, around me a that. And I'm speaking about 12 years old and, you know, that age, that tender age. Like, it did reach the point where I didn't even want to go to school. And if you know me personally, 
I love school but that environment just felt so toxic and I felt like it was just something that I did I didn't want to have to deal with anymore and it was it was a really difficult experience for me and I, re I remember at that time I would I would write a lot I wrote a lot a lot a lot and I was just depressed like this day at school we never really want to go I felt out of place I never felt that I really had I mean apart from people who I went to prep school with I never really felt like I had anybody who I could you know like like talk to or like you know say this is how I feel or XYZ apart from my parents and so forth but you know when you're young and you're going through puberty you, you, you suppress the emotions as well and all of them something there so that was grade 7 and it had reached a point where I had to go to administration and people had to get called up and that was a whole mess and I decided that I didn't want to, well, <laughs> me said to my parents, I said to my parents that I don't want to go back to that school, I want to transfer and the school that I wanted to go to, I didn't get into that school because the school was full, it was a privatized school, they said they never have any space, right? And so I had to go back to the same school for, for my second year of high school which was 8th grade and things weren't as serious Things weren't as serious as grade 7 in terms of the bullying and so forth but it was still there and I tried again for the private school and still never worked so I was still at the same the same high school that I was at initially and I said okay I said to God I said you know what I'm going to stay here and I'm going to push I'm going to push through and you know let this be an experience let this be something that you know I can learn from and it's going to make me stronger what does it kill you make you stronger right that's what they always say <laughs> so i stayed at that school and as i said i stayed at that school for for seven years so i went through grade 9 10 11 graduated and even when i graduated like honestly i did not want to go back when i left that school i said i wanted to leave the parish <laughs> because i just felt that i could never i felt like i couldn't walk in peace i couldn't speak in peace i couldn't articulate myself without everybody's saying oh like the fish or the batman or you know xyz and so yeah so i felt like i couldn't be so i wanted a fresh start and end up that i applied for six forms in kingston i think i spoke about this in my in my med school journey and i didn't get into those schools i went back to my to my high school not that my high school is not no minion school or or anything but i wanted i wanted a fresh start and i went back there and you know grade 11 13 pretty much the same energy from before not as bad because I had like senior positions I was deputy head boy and so forth so it wasn't it wasn't so bad right but I give all that backstory to really to really touch on the topic of of bullying and how that experience has basically molded me into who I am today and just to speak about some of the repercussions of that bullying and hopefully just to give you guys like like some light you know maybe maybe what i'm speaking about can maybe help you or maybe something that you've gone through and you have those emotions that maybe you're suppressing and you haven't really come to terms with them right so that was high school eventually i kind of got like a thick skin to stuff because i would be so accustomed for example i went to a school where there were like 1500 or so boys right as a school population and so i couldn't walk without tearing you know people saying things about me or if I spoke it was automatic judgment and I I I basically just pretended like I never hear anything or that it never it never after a point it really didn't bother me well I thought it didn't I thought it didn't bother me and I just I just went through you know because at the end of the day I'm just me it's, it's how I speak it's how I walk it's I speak with my hands and, and all that I just me it's just roomy and uh, when I started university when I started university, um, it was a similar situation. With, and many people might not know because it's not something that I speak about a lot any, any, anymore. I try not to even think about it too much. But it's like I was forced to to face like everything that I was suppressing because no, okay, I'm in China, I'm not in Jamaica anymore, and I'm so far away from home. And I don't know, something about university life, especially when like, like you live on, you know, yeah. It's a different setting and I think it's a, it's a very reflective time and I started to think a lot and I realized that it was a similar situation where some people were like giving me a certain energy and I realized like at, at 19 at 20 years old 
that I've been suppressing all these emotions all this time and the thing that I went through in high school have really given me like like social anxiety and I don't certain things I won't I won't do or I won't I won't speak a certain way just so I don't have to be like like seen and what I mean by that and if you know me personally you might realize that I only hang around the male male friends who I've known for a very long time like my best friend from my best friend is my friend who I've had from prep school I've known him for almost 13 years now right over 13 years now and that's because I don't feel comfortable around males because I always feel that everything that I do is under a microscope and I can never I can never speak without feeling like 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 attacked or or pinned out and when when I realized that that I was I was doing these things I had to sit down and I had to reflect and I was saying are you really going to live your life for what others think about you because before you know I ignored it and I didn't, I didn't come to terms I'm like oh whatever people go talk but then I realized that I was actually like if me if, if I was supposed to walk for example if I, if I was by myself and I would see like a group of boys I talk about in the university and I would see like a group of boys like sitting down and talking to each other I wouldn't walk there like honestly I mean, I'd probably walk somewhere else or wait, or wait for them to leave and that's because of suppressed emotions and things and baggage that I've been carrying with me from high school and because because in that setting you know if I walked there immediately then it would be the taunting and I just couldn't be bothered to hear it so I wouldn't and I realized that I've been carrying that with me like for all these years I found as well that for example if I was editing so I was editing a YouTube video and say I did something with my, with my hands that maybe I would I would deem that people would think what well, maybe was too feminine or I wouldn't speak in how I thought you know I should be speaking for a Jamaican male or something then I would edit it out I would edit it to the T where everything was like crystal clear and and blah 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 and I said to myself the other day I say no don't do that because at the end of the day you have to be your authentic self and what what others what others say about you shouldn't define who you are as an individual and that is something that it's so easier said and i just want to touch on the thing especially in our jamaican society people pay a lot of attention to how to how others choose to choose to behave or choose to dress or choose to carry themselves and it's not something that we speak about because oh you know you're for man up and you're for this and you're that but your child experiences, your, your your experiences from a young age, from a tender age, they can really come back to haunt you. Not not that you know my 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 past is haunting me or anything, but it can have some serious repercussions on your on your emotions, you know, in in your adulthood and so forth. And so after I realized all those things, I had to, you know I sat down and I did my reflection and I said you know what Rumi, you have to live for you. Tomorrow is actually my birthday and I'm turning 21 and I'm so blessed that I've been able to live to see so many years of life. Really thankful. And I'm trying, like going forward on my YouTube journey, to just try to be more more me. And I know that when I started out because people would say to me, Oh, maybe you're a bit stiff or you're a bit reserved, but it's because I'm so critical of everything that I do because I've always been judged for everything that i do so it's like if it's not if it's not done to perf if it's not perfect or what i what i think people would deem as oh you know a pass or perfect then you know so so yeah try to be more authentically me with with how i speak how i how i express how i express myself and that's just that's just real me and so you know it's not really not going to be a long video I just wanted to to really to really touch on that and to just and to just implore you guys to just live for you so people will always talk and my mother would always say this to me and god bless her heart love your mommy she would always say just be yourself and that's one thing that's a lot about my mommy because she's never forced me to be anybody else irregardless of what people have always said about me you know just be yourself dress so you want dress 
live for you and live and just be happy and just be you because at the end of the day you answer for yourself and you answer you, you answer for your own actions in life and for how for how you choose to carry yourself or for how you choose to behave so i just want to implore you guys to not let what society says or to not let what the world says define who you are just be yourself and just be you i love you guys thank you so much for watching this video i really do appreciate all the support and until next time guys Sajin, love you all